Hello, and it's part three of the WordPress theme development series using the blank canvas of the boilerplate theme by Tidy Themes, known as Blank Slate. Part two created five simple CSS rules to outline the major structural elements of the post page and looked at the corresponding files. Part three is an intro to the entire edit.php file, is intended as an overview, and preceding tutorials will dig deeper. There will be some CSS in uh, part three continued. The header.php file is open on the left of the code editor and the footer.php is open in the right pane. Again, these files are exactly as they appear when first opening them after a fresh install of the blank slate theme. Starting at the very top of the header.php file is the familiar doctype HTML declaration instructing web browsers about what version of HTML is being used. In this case, HTML5, and HTML5 requires only this one declaration. Next, line 2, the opening HTML tag, which closes, as you'd expect, in the footer.php file on the right of the code editor here on screen on line 11. Back in the header.php file next to the HTML tag is the WP language attribute function used by web technologies to manage the language of the site's pages. Now that brings us into the head of the header line 3 to line 8. The WordPress function for the meta character set does the work of defining the set for the alpha and numeric characters and symbols of the world. Line 5, the function equals viewport is a necessary function for responsive display, basically telling browsers to scale the site's page to the device width that it's being viewed on. Of course, designers still have to design sites to look differently at the various device sizes. And line 6, beginning with link rel equals. This links the style.css file, which is visible here, second to the last in the code editor's file tree, far left of screen. At line 7, the php wp underscore head function is called a hook and is used by a number of things, including plugins and WordPress, to hook and add other styles, scripts and meta tags as and when required throughout your site. Now that completes the head of the document and we come to the body tag. Firstly, the closing body tag appears here in the footer.php in the right pane of the editor on line 10. Then back in the header.php file on line 9 and next to the opening body tag is the WordPress PHP function of body class. To simplify this, for now, it's a function that WordPress uses to automatically output CSS classes. We'll visit this function further into the course. And next, a container element. I'll be writing a CSS rule for this Rapidiv in a second, but I want to run through the rest of the header file, bearing in mind that this is the first of three tutorials on the header.php file. So to the class of hfeed on line 10, the hfeed class is not a class for CSS styling, but is a part of the hatom microformat. It's an additional markup. It's referred to as blob syndication. I've provided links to further info in the summary at the end of this video. The header element from line 11 to line 22 is a predefined ID of header by default of the blank slate theme on fresh install. Of course, this can be renamed. The ID header is followed by a role attribute of banner. This is a layer of semantic expression known as ARIA, Accessible Rich Internet Applications, a framework of attributes to make web applications more accessible to people with disabilities. If you've ever read web pages using assistive screen reader technologies for the visually impaired, then you'll have some idea of what's going on here. The name banner is not arbitrary and a list of role attributes is available at w3.org. Um, again, there's links at the end. Now our first HTML5 selection element. Its purpose is to group the introductory contents of the header element. It should not be used for CSS styling. Sections are not container elements and the container divs within it 
are for styling purposes. The div of site title contains a number of WordPress PHP functions and some familiar HTML. The next tutorial digs deeper into these, but for now, to point out the familiar HTML heading level 1 and the link elements that are being applied to the site title. So as we're now at the beginning of the actual content of the site, let's begin to view these in the context of our website and then write some CSS. So what's where? The site title on line 13 of the header.php file is highlighted in the site here in the browser right of screen. The site description on line 14 of the header.php file is now highlighted in the site in the browser right of screen. Well, that ends the very brief section element and leads to the nav element, line 16. Here's another all attribute of navigation and the nav element has the ID of menu, which can be used for styling. Line 18 is the WordPress function PHP get search form, literally meaning get the search form and display it. And the form is highlighted here in the browser right of screen. Now the menu is created with this WordPress function and I've highlighted this to the right of screen in the browser. The nav element then closes and the header element closes behind that. That leaves the container div, the partner to the previous wrapper div, which I'll now write the CSS for in the very next video of part three continued. In summary, the header.php file establishes the hatom feed class of blog syndication, the role attribute of the ARIA system, A-R-I-A, -A, makes the site more accessible to people with disabilities. The metadata of the head of the header facilitates responsive displays across devices, handles language and character sets, links the style.css sheet and provides a hook for use by plugins and more. So thanks for watching part three and I look forward to joining you in the next of the series.